Hi everyone and welcome to your fifth lesson of low level operations. What we're going to look at this week is graphics. So we'll look at bitmap graphics and vector graphics and hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll be able to describe the difference between them. You'll also be able to um, describe how the computer stores each type of graphic and also calculate the storage requirements for each graphic. So the first type of graphic we're going to look at is a bitmap. So graphics, which are also pictures, images, cartoons, drawings, or graphs, or logos even, are all represented in your computer system using binary. So we all know that binary is ones and zeros. Graphics are made up of tiny dots on the screen called pixels, which is a word I'm sure we've all heard before. And pixels is really just the shortened version of picture elements. Every computer graphic is made up of a grid of pixels. Now, in black and white bitmap images, the computer uses a pattern of ones and zeros to store these pixels. In black and white graphics, a zero is used to represent a white pixel, and a one is used to represent a black pixel within a graphic. So I'll talk you through some examples, and you'll see what I mean just now. So here's an example of a graphic on the left-hand side. Again, just black and white grid of pixels. And you can see that the bit pattern, so the binary pattern here on the right, is representing all of the black pattern, all of the black pixels with ones, and all of the white pixels here with zero. So that's how our computer stores these graphics. I'll show you another example just now. So there's black pixels here and here, which are represented with ones, and all of the white pixels are represented with zero. So when we're going to talk about storing the bitmap graphics, um, in a simple black and white, which is also called monochrome graphic, and monochrome just means that there's only two colors. So in a simple monochrome graphic, each pixel is represented by one bit. All black pixels are represented by one, and all white pixels are represented by zero. And we know if they're stored as one bit, bit means binary digit, so it is just going to be a one or a zero in each pixel. So if I was to ask what is the storage size of this graphic here on the right, simply what you do is count all of the pixels along the top and along the side. So we have eight along the top and eight along the side, which gives us 64 pixels. We know that each pixel requires one bit of storage. So therefore, if we have 64 pixels, we have 64 bits, which is also equal to eight bytes. Okay, because we know that there's eight bits in a byte. So this graphic here on the right hand side would require either 64 bits or eight bytes of storage space inside the computer. If your black and white bitmap graphic had 20 pixels on the long side and eight pixels on the short side, what will the file size be? Well, simply all we do is 20 multiplied by eight. That will give us our grid of pixels, which gives us 160. As mentioned before, each pixel requires one bit of storage, so the graphic requires 160 bits of storage, but if we divide that by 8, because there's 8 bits in a byte, that gives us 20 bytes of storage as well. So this graphic here, with a grid of pixels 20 by 8, will either require 160 bits or 20 bytes of storage. We're going to talk about resolution now. Um, you might have heard of the word resolution, and it's basically just um, the number of pixels in a square inch of the graphic. We've talked about resolution in class before maybe as being um, how blurry an image is, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about the more technical aspects of it just now. So the more pixels that there are in a square inch, that means the more detail there will be in the picture. And what we use for this is a term called DPI, which just stands for dots per inch. So the dots per inch refers to how many pixels are in a square inch of a graphic. So if we take this graphic here on the bottom left, this image is 3 inches by 2 inches and has a DPI of 150. So what is the file size? Well, I'm going to show you how we work that out just now. 
As I've said, it's three inches by two inches, um, a DPI of 150. So what we have to do is multiply three, which is the long side, by 150, which is the DPI, which gives us 450 pixels. On the short side then is two inches, and we multiply that by the DPI of 150, which gives us 300 pixels. So the total pixels in this graphic is 450 multiplied by 300, which gives us 135,000 pixels. Each pixel requires one bit of storage, so that's 135,000 bits, which is also equivalent to 16,875 bytes, and there I've converted it into kilobytes as well. We're now going to look at vector graphics. So there's a different way to store graphics on your computer system that isn't a binary grid, and it's used to represent each pixel. So these graphics are called vector graphics. Now, they're not made up of individual pixels at all, but rather from individual shapes layered on top of each other to make up the whole picture. So the best way to um, describe this is think about drawing an image in Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint, where you can just draw the preloaded images. Okay, So if you say insert shape and then just draw, as I've done here, a rectangle and a circle, this is an example of a vector graphic. So these shapes are known as objects and they are stored in memory as a description of each object that consists of a mathematical list of its attributes. Okay, so I know that sounds quite complex, but really what I'm saying here is this is the object and then everything that describes these objects are what we call their attributes. Okay, so the object attributes will include where they are to appear on the screen and a full description of the shape. So for example, the attribute type, so that can be, um, that really is just what shape it is. So as you can see, the type here is a rectangle and a circle. Layer, so just if they're on top of each other or not. Position is the coordinate, so just um, where it's supposed to be placed on the screen. We have number of sides attributes, so for example, the Number of side attribute for the rectangle here would be four. Length of sides, we've got line color. So the way you can change and um, the outline of these shapes that is stored, vector graphics are stored with that attribute. Line color, line thickness. We then have fill color. So the fill color for these obviously are yellow and red. Um, but there's so much more you think of how many other different shapes you can draw on Microsoft Word or PowerPoint and all of the different things you can do to manipulate those shapes they will be stored as attributes so the objects are simply just the shape but the attributes are every other thing that describes the shape and how it appears and um, everything here in this list really so the main differences between bitmap and vector graphics um, bitmap is used in Paint, so we've all used Microsoft Paint before, where you can draw almost freehand. Okay, so that's where we use bitmap graphics, whereas vector graphics are used in Draw or Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. For bitmap graphics, every individual pixel is stored in memory, whereas for vector graphics, it's only a description of each shape or object which is stored in the memory. Like both graphics are stored as binary in the computer system. Bitmap graphics have a larger file size, whereas vector graphics have a smaller file size. The reason for that is because bitmap graphics have to store every single pixel, whereas vector graphics only store the description of the graphic itself. For a bitmap image, you can't separate the shapes. Just think if you were drawing um, freehand in Microsoft Paint or something, you can't then change that up and change the shapes and move them at all. Whereas if you're in Microsoft Word and I draw a rectangle, a circle, a triangle, I can move them all across the screen so I can separate those, no problem. For a bitmap graphic, when you zoom into it, it appears quite jaggy around the edges. That's how we um, determine if it's got good resolution or not. Okay, So when it appears jaggy, we'll know that that's a bitmap graphic. 
Whereas for a vector graphic, if you zoom in, it doesn't lose any of that quality around the edges. It still has really sharp edges, um, even when you zoom in completely to it. Finally then, for bitmap graphics, you can edit individual pixels to change the picture. So in that grid of pixels, you can change any one that you want, any individual one. Whereas for the vector graphic, you would have to change the whole shape or the whole object to change the picture. So your task for this lesson is to complete the task sheet, which is attached to the notification called 6B graphics questions and submit that via show my homework. And then you also have to create a poster. Now that can be a PowerPoint slide or Microsoft Word document showing an original image of your favorite video game character, cartoon animation, or anything you want really, um, and create a bitmap graphic and a vector graphic version of it. Okay, so then once completed, you just have to cut and paste your three images onto the space provided in your task sheet. So it's the last page, um, and I've called it Original Bitmap and Vector Graphics Challenge. Okay, so for example, this is what I did here in Microsoft PowerPoint. So I copied and pasted um, an Angry Bird just from Google Images and put the title Original underneath it. I then went on to Microsoft Paint and tried to draw it freehand. Okay, this is what the bitmap graphic then is because you can see if I was to zoom into that, it's really quite blurry around the edges. You can see here that it's quite blurry as well. So then I put the title bitmap and I just used the snipping tool, but you can also um, just print screen and then crop it in the Microsoft Word document. And then finally, I created a vector graphic of the same original image. So what I did was went into Microsoft Word and just inserted a circle and then I inserted um, loads of different shapes actually. I've got some rectangles, more circles, I then had the oval shapes and I had to change all of their attributes so like the fill colour and line colour to try and get it as close to the original as possible. Okay, So that took quite a while as well um, but you can see here I've now got original bitmap and vector graphics that I've created myself. So that's what I want to see everyone do for the last part of 6B graphics questions task sheet. Okay, If there's any questions or queries about this task, just add a comment on show my homework um, and I'll be able to help you as soon as possible. Okay, good luck.